Assalamu alaikum everybody, this is your Arabic teacher Sam and a very warm welcome back to another video here on the Arabic with Sam channel. Or if you're watching this inside of the Arabic in 60 Steps program, then uh, you know how it works in here. So um, so what we're going to do in this little video is we're just going to do a bonus. Um, we're just going to do a bonus Arabic plurals workshop because although we cover the Arabic plurals in a lot more depth in later, in later steps, we actually start to see them from step one in the program and some students uh, would really like to know some of the nitty-gritty about it. You know, a number of students kind of messaged me and said, Sam, in step one, we see these plurals in, in brackets next to a lot of the vocabulary and the vocab lists, and uh, we can't really spot a pattern. We can't really spot a pattern for how we get from words like weledun to awledun, or the word shemsun to shumusun for their plurals. So, um, so what we're going to do here is I'm just going to intercept a little bit, and I'm just going to give you some of that information if it's something that you, you, you just can't get past. So some, some students aren't happy just accepting it. They, they want to know some of the technicalities of it. So what we've got here is I've got some paper here and I've set up a bird's eye view camera there as well so you can see what I'm writing and we're just going to kind of work through the different kinds of plurals very briefly in the Arabic language uh, just before we get into the nitty-gritty uh, for those of you on YouTube I'm actually going to just give a quick shout out to some of the new students so a very warm welcome to Chan who joined the program joined the program a couple of days ago a uh, big shout out to Isa who joined the program as well your books are both in the post for you as well um, Alison very warm welcome to the program. Jacob, India, Musa, Abdullahi, and Abdul Karim. So those are all guys who have joined in the past few days. So a very, very warm welcome to the program to you guys. So um, so let's get into it without further ado. So so Arabic plurals. Okay, Arabic plurals. So Arabic plurals pretty much are of two kinds. Um, so let's break it up into two kinds. So the Arabic plural is... Um, and it's actually very similar to English. You know, I quite often like in my teaching of the Arabic language to draw parallels to English because sometimes we, we, we learn about something being really challenging in Arabic. And then when we take a closer look, we realize that we actually do it as well in English. Or sometimes we even do something weirder in English. So we have two kinds of plurals. We have what we call broken plurals. We have what we call broken plurals. And we have what we call sound plurals. Um, in Arabic, we call these a general a general, and then we have a salem, a salem, a general salem, or a general taksir, a taksir. So yeah, a general salem or a general taksir for the sound plural or the broken plural. Let's start with the broken plural because they're much more common and they're the ones that the students are usually struggling with when they come into step one. So I'll bring you into one of our lovely workbooks. Um, so let's come to step one. In step one we have phrases, right? And in here we've got all of these different nouns and adjectives, all with the words in brackets next to them, and those are the plurals. So we have rajulun, rijalun, waladun, awladun, bintun, banatun, etc. So um, so we're going to start with broken plurals because all of these are broken plurals. And it's kind of, you know, like in, in, in English an example of a broken plural might be something like the word mouse and then the singular being mice. Or, um, or the word... Um, medium and then the plural being media right it doesn't follow a conventional rule or a sound plural in english like in english our sound plural is pretty much just sticking an s on the end table tables pen pens book books teacher teachers right so um so let's talk about the blo broken plurals broken plur plurals <laughs> broken plurals right so what happens with a broken plural is we take whatever the word is right noun or adjective and we break up its root letters. So let's take an example, okay? Let's take the word kabir, and I'm gonna put its root letters in red. Kabir. Kabir. Kabir, okay? So its root letters are in red, and we're gonna kind of break apart those root letters. So what do we have? We have kaf, ba, and ra. And we put them into a pattern, right? So the, the reason why I think it's a really good idea to just introduce the plurals from the very beginning, even when you don't understand all the rules, is because I find it really helpful to just learn these words in pairs. Kabir on kibar on sagir on sigar on jamil on jumala'u. Like we, I, I find it very easy just kind of hear the music of it. Da -da 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 you know, that's, that's the way that I always found really helpful. So, so we put them into these different patterns and there's maybe 15 of these different patterns. And th there are some rules that we do get into for kind of how you can look at a noun or an adjective and you can predict what its plural will be. But um, 
but the way it t tends to work best in my experience is just to really use your listening skills to get used to hearing words that look like this, kabir or sagir or faqir or whatever. And, and, and just as you go, you, you learn to be able to predict the plural very well. But in this case, we put it into this pattern. We put it into the, we put it into the fi'al pattern. Fi'alun pattern, right? So what do we end up with, okay? If we use this kind of pattern, right? I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it over here actually, because I think we do have enough space. So we're gonna replace this fa, and we're gonna replace this ayn, and we're gonna replace this lam with ka, ba, and ra. So we're not gonna have fi anymore, we'll have ki. We're not gonna have a anymore, we're gonna have ba. We're gonna keep that alif the same as it's not one of the root letters. I'll put it in black so that we can tell, okay? So we don't have fi'a anymore, we have kiba now. And then we're gonna change the lun on the end to run. So kibarun, so kabirun, kibarun. So one of the keys really is understanding all of the different patterns. Okay, because there's a number of different patterns that a plural can go into. And I, I remember even being taught by one of my teachers at university that in kind of very ancient Arabic, we're talking like 1,500 years ago, that they were all correct. You know, that you could actually say kabir and you could use any of the other patterns. And in fact, some of the tribes preferred one plural and other tribes preferred another, another plural. And obviously the Arabic that we've ended up with here is, you know, the, the Arabic spoken by the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his preferred dialect. So, um... So let's go through some of these patterns, right? And I'll demonstrate with a number of examples. So, so fi'al is one. Probably the most common in my experience is af'alun. Af'alun, okay? Another one, fu'ulun. Fu'ulun. Another one, fu'ulun. Fu'ulun. Apologies, my dumbers aren't looping very well because of the thickness of the pen. Forulun, forulun. Um, what else? Um, and then probably afrul, afrulun. So let's let's do some examples of each of them, so we can kind of demonstrate how, how that works. So um, so afalun, as I say, really common. Let's take the word filun, meaning an elephant. So filun, all of those are root letters. There's only three, right? So filun. We put it into here, so we're not going to have, well actually we will have F, because the first root letter is F. But I'm going to put the words that aren't root letters in black. So F, we're not going to have F, A, now we're going to have F, Y, because the Y is the root letter here. So F, Y, the elif in there is not part of the, the root letters, it's part of the pattern. So F, Y, and then we do have a lamb at the end. The lamb is the root letter and the lamb is the, the, the pattern. So we have F, Y, Lon, and that's how we say elephants. So one elephant, F, Y, Lon, lots of elephants, F, Y, Lon. Next up, what do we have? So F, Y, Lon, a really nice, really nice example would probably be something like um, Kitab, Lon. Uh, ho hold on a second, I've spelled it the wrong way around. Kitab. Bun. Okay. Kitabun. So the ka, the ta, and the ba are the root letters here. The ka, the ta, and the ba. The elif isn't a root letter. I'm gonna kind of draw over it just with that, just with just with this black. So when we put it into furulun, we're gonna end up with the plural of kitabun. How do I know? I've just heard it so many times, right? That's you no know, like a lot of you in your head are probably thinking, well, how do you know which which pattern it's going into? As I say, like there are some kind of little loose rules. But I just find it much more helpful to just hear them enough, which is why I, another reason why I think it's such, an, it's such a good idea in the program to include them from the beginning, because you're just training your ear the whole way along. So what are we going to have? So instead of fu at the beginning, we're going to have ku. So ku. Instead of ru in the beginning, we're going to have tu. So ku, tu. Ku, tu. And then instead of lun on the end, we're going to have bun on the end. So the plural of kitabun is kutobun. Kitabun, kutubun, furulun. We'll just do this one and then we'll move along because I, th I think we'll kind of understand it after we've just, just learned maybe four of them. So let's have um, the word, let's have the word baytun. Baytun. Okay, into the furulun pattern, we end up with 
Boyuton. Boyuton. Not furu, but boyu. And then the wow in there is part of the pattern, not one of the root letters. And then instead of lun on the end, it's ton, because that's one of the root letters. So this is what we mean by broken plurals. When it when it's a jamr taksir, it means that we kind of take the root letters in it, we break them up, and then we rearrange them into a new pattern, right? And these are the main ones, right? These are the main, most common ones. There are some others, right? Like if we look here in our in our vocab list, we have some that don't quite fit into that. Like if we just do a little exercise here, where we kind of try to put the right pattern into the into you know we put the right plural into the right pattern so rijalun is obviously the same as kibarun from fi'alun waladun awladun is like filun afialun um uh, baytun we've already got baytun buyutun kibarun sigarun and then we have some others right that you might notice only have one dhamma on the end they just have one dhamma on the end jumala or adhkiya or lutafa or masajidu Okay, so what these are, we have a whole lesson that, that covers these, so don't worry, we do come to them, but just so that you're aware of them and you don't think that they're just kind of a black hole in the Arabic language, is those are other plural patterns, right? The plural pattern ef'ri'a'u, or the plural pattern fu'ala'u, or the plural mafa'ilu, that those are all legitimate patterns in the Arabic language, but those are patterns that we call memnur min as sarf. It means they don't take tenween, and there's a couple of other little rules as well in there. But uh, but those are just patterns, and they function exactly the same as this, right? Okay, so that that I think is enough for us to cover on regarding broken plurals, sound plurals. Okay, what on earth are sound plurals? So we, we've left these for last, and it kind of works out nicely because they're actually easiest as well. So um, the sound plural. In Arabic, it depends on gender. Uh, it depends on gender. It depends on gender, and it depends on case. Okay, I'm going to write case like this down here. We'll make kind of a table. Um, so, uh, what cases do we have? We can have the case which is mod four, but I'm going to put dum a dumma there to, to to indicate that. We have the case which is uh, monsub, which has a fatha. You, you, you'll cover these words that I'm saying in, 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 the, in the coming couple of lessons. And then we have um, majroor, which is with a kasra on the end. And then we have gender. Okay, what genders do we have? We have mask and we have femme. Okay, so when it's a dhamma, the sound plural is una. Hence why we get words like muslim and then the plural muslimuna. And then, and then the sound plural if it's masculine, if it's if it's fatha or kasra case, it'll be ina. Hence why sometimes you hear muslimuna, sometimes you hear muslimina, right? And the good news is that the kasra case is the same, right? It's ina as well. These two are the same, right? So if the word if if the word muslimuna is being used um, as the object of a sentence, then it will be muslimina, or if it's used after a preposition, it'll be muslimina. Okay, they'll be the same. How about for the feminine, right? Let's put these in a different colour just to uh, just to mix it up a bit. I'll put it in green. So we have at, we'd have muslimat, right? Muslimatun, right? For the for the mod four, we have muslimatin, and muslimatin. In this case, I mean that, that that's just how the Arabs like to write it. I mean, uh, like having two fetahs on the end. Arabs don't like this. The Arabic language doesn't like having air ten like that on the end because it doesn't necessarily make it clear that it's the that it's the feminine sound plural right it, it, it there, there are lots of other words like um that are used in the quran like for example the word amware ten amware ten you know it means like the the, the dead amware ten and it has this air ten ending but um but but perhaps that's the reason why the arabic language prefers to make sure that both the monsub and the majrur are expressed like this with air ten so those are the plurals in the Arabic language, both both the Jimra Salim and the Jimra Taksir. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did and you're watching this on YouTube, please never forget to like and share it. And never forget to subscribe to this channel as well. Really good news for those of you who are watching this on YouTube and, and for those of you who are watching this Inside the Arabic in 60 Steps program. But for those of you who are watching it like literally as I've published it, I've got good news because I'm uploading another video in the next hour. We've got three videos. We're doing a triple whammy today. So we've got one here, which is kind of a bonus for the Arabic in 60 Steps program. I'm going to be doing a video that's coming out in one hour, which is another bonus resource for the Arabic in 60 Steps program. But even students who aren't 
on that program will still really benefit from it too where we're going to um, take a take a lesson from Arabic workshop and uh, you know we're probably going to learn another 15 new words I'm going to give you a really nice little rule for, for saying the words for shapes in Arabic like you know or, or, for, or, or some of some of even the weird ones that we don't really even use in English very much words like octagon and heptagon and hexagon and stuff we'll learn how to say those in Arabic as well so make sure you come back in an hour to enjoy that video too and then I've got a really really big special gift for you guys as well for those of you who aren't yet on the Arabic in 60 steps program so hopefully see some of you guys later have a really really nice evening assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh